Joining me now is Michael Goodwin of the New York Daily News, Thomas Edsel, special correspondent for the New Republic, and Miguel Perez, syndicated columnist. And thanks for being with us. Okay, so we'll start. Uh, mandate or rejection of old? Oh, definitely a rejection. Uh, the Democrats didn't get a mandate here. Uh, people are, uh, you know, I'm not worried about gridlock. Why should we be worried about gridlock when gridlock is what we've already had? That Republican Congress has done nothing. So, you know, if people are concerned about gridlock, mm -hmm. I, don't see, I don't see it at all. Okay, Tom? Uh, if you look at who voted and why the Democrats won, it basically was moderate centrist voters who were not voting for the Democratic Party. They were voting to reject with the Republican Party, the corruption, Iraq, it was not a affirmation of the Democratic Party, and they don't have a mandate to work with in that sense. Was there a clearly defined Democratic strategy even? Well, I think that's, that's the point. There can't be a mandate because the Democrats didn't run on anything except Bush is no good. So it's hard to say they're voting for something except Bush is no good, which I think the country kind of united around, but it, the Democrats didn't offer a plan. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at another uh, poll. And the, they asked, will the Democrats do a better job running Congress than the GOP did? And 46% um, said better. 14% uh, said worse, and 39% said no difference, which actually surprised me that it was that high. Miguel? And that is what's significant, that a lot of people have say believe nothing's going to change. Uh, Republicans and Democrats are both do nothing. And, and unfortunately, the Democrats didn't come in, as Michael said, with a plan, with an agenda. They didn't really promise anything. We really don't know what they can do because, again, they didn't... Uh, it, it was all Bush, 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 something's wrong with Bush. But, you know, what, what do they have to offer? We still don't know. You know, it, is the system broken? I mean, this does not speak well for the system as it's, as it's functioning, Tom. Well, in fact, uh, the Republicans came in in 1994. As Bill pointed out, they did not have a mandate, but they took a mandate. They really pushed legislation. Uh, it ultimately got them into trouble, and you had a real reaction against Newt Gingrich when they shut down government. But it's possible the Democrats will, tr can, will try to turn victory into a mandate. Uh, it, it's, they're not really precluded from trying to do that. And I, it, we'll see what they do. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is worrisome that we may spend the next two years just waiting for the presidential election. Well, I think really that's what midterm elections often are about, is the presidential election that follows. And I think what the Republicans tried to do in 94 was throw out Bill Clinton in 96, and it backfired, and Bill Clinton was reelected. And I think right now that's the, that's the Democratic game plan, is to set up for 08. And if they're careful and play their cards right, they really could help the party in 08. Otherwise, they could effectively hand the White House back to Republicans again. Let's show you another poll that actually speaks to the issue we've just covered. Um, the Democratic control of Congress will lead to 56 percent said gridlock, more gridlock. Less gridlock was 15 percent and the same amount was 28 percent. Really not a ringing endorsement of, of what we look forward to for the next two years. Let's move on to some policy. And uh, Lisa Sylvester reported earlier there seems to be a division in the Democratic Party as to how to handle handle border security and the illegal alien crisis. This is a topic that we cover extensively on this broadcast. Um, do you believe that we'll make some progress on this, Miguel? Well, I hope they do, because otherwise the Democrats are going to find themselves on the same boat that the Republicans have been in. The, Demo the Republicans just complained about immigration and did nothing about it. The Democrats now have an opportunity to do something. And if they don't, especially uh, I'm a Hispanic American, Hispanic Americans uh, had been won over to a certain extent by the Republican Party. Bush made great strides. He lost at all the midterm elections. And if, if, if the Democrats don't deliver now with a, with a true uh, program of, of, you know, comprehensive immigration reform, they're in trouble. Do you believe that this is a critical issue for politics these days, Tom? I think it's a real tough one for Democrats. Uh, on the one hand, the Hispanic vote is crucial, especially in presidential politics. Uh, and if, uh, the d Democrats want to get back what they lost in 2004 and keep it. At the same time, there are white working class voters who are really angry and opposed to immigration. Uh, that's what the Republicans played to in the last election. The fact that it didn't pay off is likely to give a real boost to those who would pass immigration uh, legislation along the lines proposed by the president and supported by most Democrats. Mm -hmm. 
A real litmus test. Huh? Well, I think this is one area, though, where Democrats could overplay their hand very easily because I think the, elect the midterm elections were basically about Iraq. And I think any, to read any other message into them is tricky. Uh, I think that, so I think Bush, you know, right now looks like he is on the side of most of the Democrats in Congress with his plan, this comprehensive plan that he wants. But I think it could backfire too. So I, if I were an, an either set of shoes, I would go slowly on this one. All right, well, you bring up Iraq. We'll get to that in just a minute. We'll take a quick break. We'll have more with our panel in just a moment. First, a reminder to vote in tonight's poll. Do you believe the new Congress will be able to agree on immigration reform bill? Yes or no, cast your vote at ludobs.com. We'll bring you the results in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Larry King tonight, the night Robert F. Kennedy was shot. With Sharon Stone, eyewitnesses and more. Larry King tonight, 9 Eastern, only on CNN. Beaches, Turks and Caicos, the last of the true exotics where parents get their own getaway, and so do the kids. From Pirate's Island to Fantasy Island, the characters of Sesame Street to the streets of Paris. It's perfect. For really big savings, call 1-800-BEACHES or visit our website. What's a graphic designer? A graphic designer designs logos, web pages, CD covers, and magazine ads. Where do graphic designers work? Ad agencies, movie studios, record labels, and more. Where can I start career training to become a graphic designer? In the graphic design program at Gibbs. Call Gibbs right now for a free brochure at 1-888-257-6601. Operators are standing by. That's 1-888-257-6601. The annual Red Jack used car clearance is going on now at Hudson Honda, West New York, New Jersey. Tremendous savings on hundreds of certified pre-owned cars, trucks, minivans, and SUVs. All available with zero down. Bad credit? No problem. We guarantee credit approval. Every vehicle will be slashed. With one-time Red Jack markdown. See the drastic difference in before and after pricing right on the windshield. This week only. Hudson Honda. Just minutes outside the Lincoln Tunnel. Hudson Honda's making all the right moves for you. Providing Hoboken with over 25 years of quality professional service, R. Fiore Real Estate leads the way. Whether you're looking to rent your first apartment, invest in a single or multifamily home, or sell your property, you can find the personal attention you expect and the expert advice you deserve at R. Fiore. R. Fiore is Hoboken's leader when it comes to condo conversion projects and multifamily homes. If you're looking to buy or sell investment or commercial property, we offer the most exclusives in Hoboken and the surrounding area. R. Fiore. We'll help you find your way home. The award-winning Autism is a World. CNN Saturday and Sunday night, 8 Eastern. We're back with our panel, and gentlemen, we stopped at Iraq. Let's talk about this d horrifying level of sectarian violence, and we had a, a really hair-raising report from Michael Ware earlier in the broadcast. Um, the Pentagon has a sort of new approach, uh, go big, go long, go home, um, increase troops, perhaps. What do you think, Michael, of this? Well, I think that the events on the ground are moving much faster than events in Washington. And we may find ourselves uh, having an agreement in Washington with the Iraq study group, with the president, with the Congress. But in fact, it may not matter because of so quickly unraveling in Iraq. Now, if this government falls, I mean, I think that really was our last chance. And six months or four months ago, the American ambassador said we have to secure Iraq. We have maybe five or six months. That time is about up and things are getting worse. So events are moving so quickly, it's just looking worse and worse for the American people. Plan. Tom. It's also got uh, partisan problems because uh, it, this is happening, as you point out, so fast. The Democrats are going to be able to place the blame for this on the president. It's not something the president's going to be able to say the Democrats caused this by their whatever they're going to do in the future, uh, criticizing the war. This is really moving like a snowball. And it's going to be very hard for the administration to deflect onto the Democrats' responsibility for this collapse. Mm -hmm. It's just going very quick. Mm -hmm. Miguel. Well, for someone like myself who believes that we should really finish the job we started, uh, it's shocking to me to see what has happened in the last couple of days. Because when you, when you find out that the Iraqi police and the Iraqi military stood idle as this carnage was going on, I mean, that is shocking to me and, and I'm sure to all the American people. It's a, it, it shows how untrained they still are, how unwilling they are to take sides in this sectarian violence. So, I, I, you know, I'm becoming, becoming more and more skeptical that we can do something there. 
All right, we uh, ended on that note, and it's a sad note to end on. Michael Goodwin, Thomas Edsel, and Miguel Perez, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Still ahead, the results of our poll and more of your thoughts. Stay with us.